Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Masonry Strong Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Stephen Borg, principal at the Vogel Group and the, the lobbyist for the MCAA. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me, Justin. We're really excited to be here. Yeah, awesome. How have you been? Uh, you know, how's your trip in Utah so far? Good. I love it out here. Uh, you know, the landscape's a little different than Washington, D.C., and the uh, people are a little more down to earth than yeah. uh, what I get to deal with on a daily yeah. basis. So it's always good to get back with the members and uh, talk about ways that uh, we can have an impact in Washington, D.C. So. Speaking of what you do on a daily basis, how did you get into being a lobbyist and yeah, great question. It kind of happened by accident, uh, to be to be honest with you. So uh, I moved to Washington, D.C. in January of 2001 for what I thought would be a fun two years uh, working for a member of Congress from Illinois uh, while I figured out what I really wanted to do and uh, ended up working for the congressman for 10 and a half years. Wow. Um, you can imagine through that time was lobbied by all sorts of uh, different individuals and groups um, and uh, kind of got a feel for what worked and what didn't work and yeah. uh, thought that I'd be pretty good at it and decided to give it a try. And yeah. uh, 13 years later, here I am uh, still lobbying. So, What kind of gave you the inclination that you would be good at it? Was it, do you like to talk to people? And It's, uh, it, it's I, I constantly try to share with folks when they ask me what lobbying's like and yeah. what I do. Um, it, and I try to use the analogy Every day, I'm constantly trying to put together a puzzle yeah. that the shape and the shape of all the pieces is constantly moving. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. So it's kind of the the gamemanship of trying to figure out what what's happening yeah. and where things are going to go at the same time, building relationships and, and being able to, to kind of quickly pivot and quickly learn new issues yeah. um, and, and have those conversations and, and make an impact. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Most days, uh, some days are pretty frustrating, uh, as you can imagine, working in politics. But um, no, it, it's been a, a a ton of fun. I've been blessed to to be able to work with the association for those full thirteen years. And, yeah. um, so, uh, you know, you guys on staff, all the members, they're more like family to me now uh, than they are a client. Uh, so it's uh, I, I enjoy working for you guys. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So. What is it like lobbying for an association like the MCAA where they're a little bit more of a smaller association? Is it a little bit harder? Do you find it more peaceful? Totally. Um, I actually uh, think we can have a, actually a, a little bigger and better impact uh, being smaller. And we've actually uh, seen the impact that we've been able to have. Uh, we've really punched above our weight class. Um, and, and I would... Um, credit that with our members. Uh, they're so committed uh, to what they do um, and so committed to uh, advancing the industry. And that includes both, you know, the foundation, contributing to the PAC, but also making their voices heard Washington, D.C. So we've had great success. I think it's a little easier when you start talking about uh, some of the bigger associations that, you know, if I threw out names, everyone would know who I was talking about. Um, they come with a little bit of uh, bias and preconceived notions from, you know, staff or members of Congress, whereas a smaller association, we're really able to brand ourselves as we want um, and really have uh, um, those committed members build those relationships. Uh, you know, I was just sharing, we just had a member from Utah uh, come out for their first uh, adventure to D.C. Um, it was great. He's already got two members of Congress lined up to come visit work sites, see what he's doing on a day-to-day -day basis, and just being able to kind of personalize everything as a small small group it has been really, one, fun, yeah. and two, really impactful. Awesome. Yeah. And the MCA being uh, an association of construction, is that something you always wanted to go into as far as construction? Was it hard to learn? I guess, you know, you have to learn everything about OSHA, all the guidelines. What is that like? Yeah, uh, great question. So uh, family background, uh, it's actually kind of fun. Uh, my great-grandfather was actually a member of MCAA way back in the day. I grew up right outside Chicago. Um, so he was a mason contractor. Uh, it was a fun story um, when... Uh, my grandfather passed away. Um, my dad took a bunch of uh, his stuff and 
he was cleaning out his closet and found some of my great grandfather's old uh, business cards and gave me one. Uh, and it said, you know, Mason contracting and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I called up Jeff and I was like, hey, do you guys have historical records of membership? Yeah. Um, and he's like, yeah, well, you know, that's a weird question. Why are you asking? I was like, well, my great grandfather grew up in Illinois. I know the association was founded in Illinois. Was he a member? And he came back and he was like, yeah, he was totally a member, which was awesome. Uh, and then my wife's grandfather was also a Mason contractor. Um, so it, it's become a, a personal um, personal thing uh, for me as well, uh, which is a lot of fun. But at the beginning, like the uh, first time I came to a mid-year meeting and everyone was talking about, you know, block and brick. And like, I had no idea what they were talking about. Um, and it's really been fun um to realize you know i kind of was like yeah i can go lay some brick and block that doesn't look very hard right you just slap some stuff put it down and make sure it kind of looks straight yeah. right it's been really fun to be able to learn uh not only from the members uh, from telling me stories but also watch them at different events uh, like out in vegas at world of concrete watching the apprentices yeah um how uh artistic and how skilled uh, all these members are yeah. uh, has been really fun. Uh, it has been a learning curve, but after doing this for 13 years, I think I could uh, talk most things uh, in my sleep at this point. Yeah. Uh, so that's all. Was getting into politics exactly what you expected, or was there was there a lot of you know curveballs thrown at you? Yeah, uh, great question, um, and, and it's constantly a. Uh, changing landscape, right? So I, I mentioned I, I moved out to Washington, D.C. in January of 2001, um, working for a freshman member of Congress. Uh, only one of us on the staff had ever worked in Congress before, so we were kind of drinking from the fire hose on how this is all supposed to work and what we were doing. Um, and nine months later, September 11th happened, um, which just kind of threw a, a big monkey wrench into the political dynamics, you know, it, it went a little bit away from Republicans versus Democrats, uh, you know, punching each other to, oh, we're one unified country and really changed up uh, kind of the, the political atmosphere. Um, you get, you know, other situations um, where uh, a deal drops at midnight, you know, out of left field that no one was expecting. Um, so it's constantly a you got to keep your finger on the pulse uh, and be ready to react when, yeah. when things change. Um, so, um, but yeah, it's fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Going more into the specifics of, I know that the MCAA, the Dignity, the Dignity Act is yeah. a big talk in the MCAA and the masonry industry, construction in general. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Totally. Um, so Dignity Act is a bipartisan piece of legislation that was introduced by uh, to uh, members of the House of Representatives, a Republican from Florida, a Democrat from Texas. Um, and they got together and realized that our immigration system is really broken. At the same time, people like our members, and I, it's across the board, but uh, you know, just specifically talking about our members, are really struggling to find workforce uh, right now. So it's a, a very comprehensive piece of legislation, which uh, kind of ticks all the boxes, and they really wanted to uh, develop a piece of legislation that uh, wouldn't solve all the problems, but would solve as many as possible, knowing that that's the only way that a big controversial package like an immigration package would yeah. would move. Um, so the the two kind of main, and there's all sorts of details that, uh, you know, if, if people watching are interested in, we have background papers and all that kind of stuff that we can share. But the two kind of main uh, aspects of it is, one, it, it shuts the border down, cuts the pipeline off of, uh, you know, illegal crossings, yeah. at the same time sets up a, uh, a system for more legal immigration, um, but also opens up a pipeline for people who've been in the country uh, over a certain number of years um, to uh, legally work in the United States. So people like our members, it's kind of twofold for us, um, gives them a pipeline for new members. Uh, but unfortunately, 
uh, we've seen through the years, and it's not just on workforce issues, but that's a, a, a big issue. A lot of people are illegally paying, hiring, um, you know, employees under the table, competing with our members when they go out to bid. So those members are kind of behind an eight ball because if those illegal contractors aren't paying payroll tax and workman's comp and all this kind of stuff or paying cash under the table, um, it allows those, uh, those people to kind of lowball the bids. Um, so it's kind of a, a twofold, give us a pipeline for workforce at the same time, kind of cutting off the illegal pipeline as well and kind of level the playing field, if you will. So awesome. we've been pushing for that. Um, getting a lot of good bipartisan support uh, for that. Um, unfortunately, sometimes, as I mentioned, immigration is a, a touchy subject, uh, you know, in the political realm with it being a, a presidential election year as well. Uh, sometimes the, the politics gets in the way of good policy, but um, that's why we continue to, to fight every day and have members come up and share their stories as well uh, and, and have fun uh, trying to make an impact. Yeah. So. When you're lobbying um, and, you know, you're in the courthouses, is that correct? Or uh, So congressional offices, okay. yep. Okay. Um, and you're, you know, trying to get something like the Dignity Act, you know, people's attention. Is that hard? How, like, how did you kind of find your footing with that? Was it hard in the beginning or were you always kind of a natural with, you know, talking to people and getting people to listen? Yeah. So I think one of the, the biggest um, positives for me and why I think I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but as successful as I, I have been and hopefully will be um, is I, I'm pretty adept at being able to read uh, people pretty quickly yeah. and change to. Right. So. Uh, I'll share an example for my former boss, a uh, member of Congress. Um, if you came into the office and just kind of dove right into the weeds and yeah. got, you know, really into the policy right away, it would just go in one year and out the other. Like he just kind of tune out. And so you kind of have to read the situation. Um, if you came in, talked to him about the Boston Celtics game the night before, yeah. he's in. Oh, right? right like he's in tune meeting's gonna go awesome right. then you kind of pivot to you know the policy issue and he's paying attention because you guys connected on the Celtics so there's little uh things that you kind of need to read on that front so the the fun thing for me actually is being able to um tweak the pitch or the story in each office because they're all completely different right um some members are really policy nerds and they want to get into the weeds. Some members only really care about how it's going to help them go home and be able to talk about what they're doing in yeah. Congress. Um, some members really care about Im immigration personally. Some members could care less. Yeah. They just care about politics. So being able to uh, tweak the pitch and the story uh, is fun. Uh, I feel like it, it comes pretty natural uh, to me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. You know, we have fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Have you always uh, lived in Washington, D.C.? Or? Uh, so I grew up in Chicago okay. um, and went to the University of Illinois uh, for college. And then I worked in the uh, State House of Illinois uh, for, again, getting back to kind of the story for what I thought would be a fun one or two years while I figured out what I really wanted to do. My father had always been uh, involved and engaged in politics. Uh, so I saw this opportunity and thought it would be kind of fun. Um, and one of the state representatives at the time got elected to uh, Congress. Um, so uh, the first chief of staff asked me to come join the team uh, in D.C. And again, I moved out to January 2001 for what I thought would be a fun two years. And 24 years later, here I am with married and two teenagers at home. So uh, D.C. is kind of home now. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah. What was it like moving from Chicago to D.C.? Was it a huge kind of punch in the face, at least politically? Uh, it, it, uh, politically, yes, it, it was kind of, so working in the state house, um, you know, I was straight out of college. You kind of, you saw a state representative walk down the hall and you'd be like, well, oh, yeah. you know, this is so cool. Uh, and it, not to take anything away from them, uh, they are sacrificing a ton to, to do, uh, to do civil service. Um, but after working with them for a little bit, you kind of realize they're, just a human being like me and you and uh, same concerns and 
same fears a lot of times and, and things like that. So, um, so you kind of quickly learn that I'm a part of this process too. And uh, as a staffer back then, they, they really relied upon us. Moving to D.C., it was kind of like going from uh, the minor league baseball team where you're, you know, taking a, a van to the games and there's five people in the stands and hey, you're having fun, yeah. you're working hard, you're doing all this kind of stuff. But then you kind of get called up to the big leagues and you walk into the stadium for the first time. And it's it, that's kind of what D.C. was like at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and just uh, really fun. It's just yeah. a dynamic uh, atmosphere uh, to work, um, as I mentioned, constantly changing, be it an election where party control completely flips and you got to kind of pivot and figure out what, what the new landscape is going to look like, yeah. um, to being able to, to build relationships with members of Congress and staff, uh, over the years that, um, I, I was just telling some of our members in a alleged committee update, uh, just some of the successes that we've had, uh, um, being able to to rely on some of those relationships that we've built up over the past five, ten years. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. It's awesome. Well, as we're wrapping up here, I'll just ask you one last question: What does masonry strong mean to you? Yeah. I know you have, you know, your great grandfather was a mason contractor, so you got in your blood. Absolutely. I, I actually, it was a, a funny story. So I was texting my son uh, this morning. He asked me. You know, remind me again where you are. And uh, so I was like, you know, I'm out in Utah with my client, the Mason Contractors, and reminded him, like, your great-great-grandfather was actually a member of the association. Uh, Mom's grandfather, your great-grandfather on her side, was a Mason contractor. Wow. And his response was, wow, bricks are in my blood. <laughs> and it, it was really kind of, I was like, that's really cool, actually, yeah. that he's putting together um, that masonry strong, uh, it, it's just, uh, it makes sense for who we are as an association. The, the product, super strong. We are just, uh, took a family trip to Italy, um, and we're walking through all these ruins. Only thing left standing, brick and stone, right? Yeah. And the, the brick work, the stone work. So you get the masonry strong is the product, right? But then also the association and the members. They're just so committed to the industry, to each other, uh, to their work product, to their family. Um, so I feel like Masonry Strong just is a perfect encapsulation yeah. of not only the product, but our members in the industry as well. And I'm just so uh, proud to be a, a part of it, so. Awesome, well, Steve, thanks for, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.